Let's get right into it. Number 8. The Silent Annihilator You know that peaceful, almost spiritual feeling you get when you look up at a clear, star-dusted night sky? That sense of sublime, infinite calm? Well, congratulations. You're staring into the barrel of a loaded gun, and the trigger could have been pulled a thousand years ago. Let's talk about gamma ray bursts, or GRBs, which are basically the universe's way of reminding us that we are fragile, insignificant sacks of water that exist purely by its good graces. A GRB is an unimaginably powerful explosion, the most energetic event in the cosmos since the Big Bang. They're usually caused by a hypernova, when a star over 30 times the mass of our sun collapses into a black hole, or by two neutron stars doing a very angry, very violent tango before merging. The result is a tightly focused beam of gamma radiation, a cosmic death ray that travels at the speed of light. Now, you might think, space is big. What are the odds it's pointed at us? And you'd be right. The odds are small. But if one were aimed our way, you wouldn't get a warning. There's no dramatic asteroid hurtling through space for Bruce Willis to deal with. There's no alien fleet appearing on our radar. There would be nothing. One second, you're complaining about the price of avocados. And the next, the entire side of the Earth facing the blast is flash fried. The atmosphere would be stripped away, cooked off like fat on a skillet. Every living thing on that hemisphere would be sterilized in an instant. The other side of the planet would get to enjoy the after party, which includes a shattered ozone layer, lethal UV radiation from our own sun, and a global nuclear winter. It's not just an extinction event, it's a planetary scouring. It's the universe hitting the delete key on an entire world. And the worst part is, We'd never even know what hit us. Basically, it's the ultimate cosmic ghosting. Number seven, the galactic hitchhiker. Space is mostly, well, space. A whole lot of nothing, punctuated by the occasional flaming ball of gas or boring rock, or so you think, because hiding in that nothing are things that don't want to be seen. Meet the rogue black hole, the universe's creepiest drifter. Most black holes are politely anchored at the center of galaxies, holding everything together like a responsible, gravitationally absurd parent. But some get kicked out of their homes, usually by complex gravitational interactions or supernova explosions. They are then sent careening through the intergalactic void, silent, dark, and utterly invisible. You can't see a black hole because it swallows light. It doesn't glow. It doesn't twinkle. It just is. So how would we know one is coming for us? We wouldn't, not until it was far too late we'd only be able to detect it by its gravitational influence on things we can see. Astronomers might notice that the orbits of objects in the Oort cloud, way out at the edge of our solar system, are getting weirdly distorted. They'd think, huh, that's odd. Then Neptune's orbit might start to wobble. By then, panic would be setting in, because we'd realize there's an invisible monster bowling through our solar system. This isn't a quick, merciful zap like a gamma ray burst. This is a slow, agonizing home invasion. It would start by flinging comets and asteroids from the outer solar system directly at Earth, a celestial game of pinball where we are the bumper. Then, as it got closer, its gravity would start to tug on the planets themselves, turning our stable, predictable solar system into a chaotic mess. And if it came close enough, well, you know the drill. Spaghettification, the ultimate undignified end, where you and your planet are stretched into a thin noodle of atoms and regret. It's cosmic horror at its finest, an invisible giant that you only realize is there when you feel its breath on your neck. Number six, the reality glitch. Imagine you're blowing a bubble, and suddenly, the very concept of soap ceases to exist. And the bubble, you, and the air you're breathing, all transform into something fundamentally different and incomprehensible. Welcome to the idea of false vacuum decay, which is less of a cosmic horror and more of a cosmic existential horror that says to and this is Nastidoan. This isn't about something hitting us. It's about the very rules of reality deciding they're done playing the game. The theory goes like this. The universe, in its current state, is stable. The laws of physics work. Atoms hold together. Light behaves itself. Gravity keeps your feet on the ground. But what if this stable state isn't the most stable state? What if our universe is like supercooled water? Liquid and seemingly stable, but just one tiny disturbance away from instantly freezing solid. This is the concept of a false vacuum. If, somewhere in the cosmos, a tiny bubble of the true vacuum, a lower, more stable energy state, were to spontaneously form, it would expand outward in all directions at the speed of light. Inside this bubble, the laws of physics would be completely different. 
The fundamental forces that govern everything could have different strengths. The properties of elementary particles could change. In this new, truer universe, atoms might not be able to form. Chemistry would be impossible. Life as we understand it would be a nonsensical concept. Because this bubble of new physics expands at the speed of light, we would have absolutely no warning. It wouldn't kill you in a conventional sense. One moment, you exist. The next, you and everything you've ever known are inside a region of space where the building blocks for your existence are fundamentally invalid. It's the universe undergoing a factory reset. And we're just a corrupted file that's about to be wiped. Number 5. The Cosmic Plague We tend to think of threats as things that break other things. An explosion. A collision. An impact. But some of the most terrifying threats don't destroy. They convert. Think of a zombie virus or the mythical King Midas, where a single touch changes something into something else entirely. Now, apply that concept to the very atoms that make up our world. Let's talk about strange matter and its theoretical delivery system, the strange lay. In the world of particle physics, you have your standard up and down quarks that make up protons and neutrons. But there are other, more exotic flavors, like the strange quark. The theory is that under extreme pressure, like inside a neutron star, a soup of up, down, and strange quarks could form a substance called strange matter. This strange matter might just be the most stable form of matter in the entire universe. And here's the terrifying part. According to the hypothesis, if a piece of strange matter, even a microscopic strange light, were to touch regular matter, it would trigger a catalytic conversion. The strange light would absorb the nucleus of a normal atom and, in an instant, transform it into more strange matter. This new, larger piece of strange matter would then convert the atoms next to it, setting off a runaway chain reaction that would spread at nearly the speed of light. So, imagine a single invisible strange light, forged in the collision of two distant neutron stars, hurtling through space. It passes through you, unnoticed. But the instant it touches the ground, the infection begins. A wave of conversion silently spreads through the Earth, transforming rock, water, and air into a single, hyperdense, inert sphere of strange matter. There's no bang, no flash. The planet simply ceases to be a planet and becomes a strange star. It's not just death. It's the deletion of your very substance. A planetary zombie apocalypse where the world itself is the victim. Number 4. The Great Silence this next one isn't a projectile or an explosion. It's a question. The question is, where is everybody? Our galaxy is home to hundreds of billions of stars, many with Earth-like planets. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. By all statistical logic, the sky should be teeming with signals from advanced alien civilizations, their empires glittering across the cosmos. But when we look up, there is nothing. Just silence. This deafening quiet is known as the Fermi Paradox, and one of the most chilling potential solutions to it is the concept of the Great Filter. The theory proposes that on the long road from simple life to a galaxy-spanning civilization, there is at least one step that is almost impossible to overcome. A wall. A filter. The horror lies in not knowing where that filter is on our timeline. Is it behind us? Maybe the jump from non-life to life, or from single-celled to multi-celled organisms, was the incredibly rare event, and we are one of the first if not the only species to have made it through. That's the optimistic view. The terrifying alternative is that the Great Filter is still ahead of us. This would mean that countless civilizations have risen to our level of advancement before, only to be systematically wiped out by the same inevitable barrier. What could it be? The invention of technology that invariably leads to self-destruction. The moment a civilization becomes powerful enough to attract the attention of something truly ancient and hostile, or maybe it's a natural event that only triggers when a species reaches a certain energy output. We don't know. Every new scientific breakthrough, every step we take towards the stars, could just be us moving closer to the final exam that no one has ever passed. The cosmic silence isn't empty space. It's a graveyard. And we might just be the next civilization to be buried in it. Number 3. The Universal Shredder We find comfort in things that stick together. The bonds between atoms. The gravity holding our planet in one piece the love that connects a family. The universe itself seems to be built on this principle of cohesion. But what if the fundamental nature of reality wasn't about coming together, but about flying apart? Let's talk about the Big Rip, which is what happens when the universe's accelerating expansion stops being a gentle drift and becomes a runaway freight train. You've heard of dark energy, the mysterious force that's pushing galaxies away from each other. Well, in the Big Rip scenario, this force, 
sometimes called phantom energy, doesn't just push, it strengthens. It becomes a repulsive force that grows more powerful over time until it can overcome everything. It wouldn't happen all at once. The horror is in the scale and the implacable schedule. First, tens of millions of years before the end, the force would become strong enough to overcome the gravity-binding galaxy clusters. From our perspective, the night sky would begin to empty as distant galaxies winked out, their light no longer able to reach us across the expanding void. Then, a few million years before the end, our own Milky Way would be dismantled, its stars flung into a new, lonely darkness. A few months before the final moment, our solar system would be unbound. Earth would fly off on its own, no longer tethered to the sun. In the last minutes, the Earth itself would explode, as the repulsive force overwhelms the gravity holding it together. In the final fraction of a second, the shredding gets personal. The electromagnetic forces holding your molecules together would fail. Then the nuclear forces holding your atoms together would fail. The fabric of space-time itself would tear apart, shredding everything, right down to the subatomic level, into an infinite number of unbound particles. It's not an explosion. It's a universal, absolute disintegration. Every single thing, everywhere, simultaneously unmade. Number two, the unseen landlord. Think about how you interact with the world. You exist in three dimensions. Now imagine a two-dimensional creature, a flatlander, living on a perfectly flat sheet of paper. To this creature, you are a god. You can see the inside of its locked houses, you can see its past and future laid out on the paper, and you can touch its very insides without breaking its skin, simply by dipping your three-dimensional finger down into its two-dimensional world. It would be a terrifying, incomprehensible intrusion from a reality it cannot possibly grasp. Now here's the unsettling part. What if we're the Flatlanders? This is the core horror of higher-dimensional beings. We can't prove they exist, but some of our most advanced physics, like string theory, suggests there are more spatial dimensions than the three we perceive. And if there are other dimensions, there might be things living in them. These beings wouldn't be little green men in spaceships. They would be to us what we are to a character drawn on a page. Our entire universe, our past, present, and future, could be an open book to them. They could observe us, interact with us, or alter us with a level of power we can't even begin to imagine. A locked bank vault is as open to them as an empty field. Your own body offers no protection. They could reach inside you and rearrange your organs without leaving a mark. And the true terror isn't that they might be hostile. Hostility implies they see us as a threat, or at least as something worth hating. The real horror is that they might not see us at all. Our entire existence could just be a ripple, a minor side effect of their own incomprehensible lives. A cosmic event that wipes out our galaxy could be nothing more than them closing a door in their higher dimensional house. We are, at best, ants scuttling across the floor of a being so vast and alien that its simple act of breathing could be a hurricane that erases us from reality. We live in their world, but we will never, ever see the landlord. Number one, pulling the plug. Ever played a video game? Maybe an incredibly detailed open world RPG or a life simulator like The Sims? You create characters, build worlds, and watch them live out their little digital lives, all according to the rules of the code you're running. You, the player, are their unseen god. Now, what if I told you that it's statistically very likely that you, me, and our entire universe are in the exact same position? This is the simulation hypothesis, and it's a modern twist on cosmic horror that replaces monsters with programmers. The argument is chillingly simple. If any civilization, anywhere, ever develops the technology to create ancestor simulations, simulations of their past so perfectly detailed that the beings inside are conscious, they would likely run billions of them. For research, for entertainment, who knows? If that's the case, then basic probability dictates that it is overwhelmingly more likely that we are one of the countless simulated consciousnesses than the one, single, base reality. The horror here isn't that your life isn't real in the traditional sense. Your pain, your love, your memories, they all feel real to you. And that's all that matters, right? The terror is in the absolute, total, and pathetic lack of agency. We are not the masters of our fate. We are lines of code running on some unfathomable cosmic computer. Our universe's physical constants aren't fundamental truths. They're just sliders in the world generation settings. The Big Bang wasn't a beginning. It was just someone double-clicking run program. And what happens when the simulation has served its purpose? Or the researchers get the data they need? Or, even worse, what if our universe is just some kid's forgotten science fair project, 
and their mom finally tells them to clean out the garage. There's no appeal. There's no fight. One moment, our entire reality exists. The next, the process is terminated. It's the ultimate existential dread. The knowledge that your whole existence could end not with a bang, but with a click. Number zero, the mind-shattering truth. We've talked about explosions, collisions, and esoteric physics. But the final, and perhaps greatest, cosmic horror isn't a thing that can happen to us. It's a truth we might uncover ourselves. Since the dawn of consciousness, humanity has been driven by one impulse above all others. To know. To understand our world, our universe, and our place within it. We build colliders and launch telescopes, all in a relentless search for a final theory of everything. Sauti Salmo Ahald, but the core tenet of cosmic horror, the philosophy of writers like H.P. Lovecraft, is that this is the most dangerous game we could possibly play. The assumption is that the universe is, at its core, understandable by the human mind. But what if it isn't? What if the true nature of reality is so profoundly alien, so utterly hostile to our concepts of logic, purpose, and sanity, that to truly comprehend it would be to go irrevocably mad? The threats on this list are, at least, comprehensible in their terror. Annihilation, conversion, disintegration. We can grasp those concepts, but they are the horrors that exist within our limited perception. What lies beyond that? The mind-shattering truth is the idea that ignorance is a structural necessity for our survival. Our brains evolved to find ripe fruit and avoid predators on the savanna, not to grapple with the 11-dimensional geometry of a being whose thoughts are galaxies and whose life cycle is a law of physics. The great silence from the Fermi paradox might not be a graveyard. It might be a self-imposed quarantine. Perhaps every intelligent species reaches a point where they get a glimpse of the real truth, the real management of the cosmos, and they either destroy themselves in terror or learn to be very, very quiet. The ultimate horror isn't an external threat, but the answer to our deepest questions. We are searching for a truth that our minds are fundamentally not built to contain. It's the final terrifying paradox. The only thing more frightening than not knowing is knowing. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.